Uh... You blew it. Don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I grew up around Princeton in New Jersey, and I live in Harlem now. Yeah, I went to Barsons. Uh, I originally went for the design technology program, but then wasn't really feeling it. I'm not trying to turn you off, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, it was not really what I was looking for, I guess. And then I took a couple illustration classes, and I don't know, they, uh, the program just seemed a little more focused in it. Like in my junior year, I decided to switch, yeah. Uh, in, yeah, it's like a postgraduate program. Um, I mean, it's only one year, but it's a certificate program for typeface design, so it's pretty, um, like a specific field to get into, but um, I got a crazy teacher named Jesse Reagan, and he's like ridiculously amazing at typography. Like his eyes are like microscopes, and yeah, I'm just learning a ton. It's crazy. I love it. I guess I, I, I was never really into type that much, I guess, in college. I was, I went to school originally for like animation, and I was really into like motion design and stuff like that, and I thought that's what I would, I would be doing. But then, um, literally in my senior year in college, I took this one calligraphy course with this dude named Paul Shaw, and he's like, He's kind of like a crazy guy, but he's like amazing calligrapher and I mean, I, I didn't really know what calligraphy was up until then I just wanted to do like more like drawn type and stuff like that And then I took that class and I got really really into it and that's kind of what led me into going into typography and I actually found that it I don't know it kind of like suits me a little bit because I, I do like really like detail oriented things, but I also like really simple things and Typography is kind of like the perfect balance of it's super fucking detail oriented and like it's really really hard but at the same time it's, at the end of the day it's a simple form and I, I, I don't know I guess that's what I like about it. Oh man like immensely. I, th I think that's probably my biggest influence. I'd say. I mean I haven't lived anywhere else so I can't really say for sure but I'm constantly inspired by the city. I love going to museums. I love seeing people. I mean, there's a lot of people here. And another thing is, like, I get really car sick, so I don't like being in cars too much. And I love, I love that it's just like all subway. And but yeah, I, um, and again, I don't know if it's specific to New York, but I've made connections that are very like serendipitous, and I think could. I obviously, <laughs> I can't say it could only happen in New York, but like sometimes it feels like. New York spawns a lot of these connections, and uh, that's another thing I really like about it. That's a good question. I mean, it really varies from project to project. I mean, most of the stuff I do now is like lettering based and some sort of custom type solution, so usually I'll, I'll try to research whatever like mood or time period or genre I'm going for and then I'll kind of like pull that all together and then I'll just like sketch a bunch and then at some usually unless I'm doing kind of like a rough thing I usually like bring it into the computer and then digitize it in Robofont and that's like the program we're, we're learning at the type program at Cooper so I can't go back I use that for everything now it's like a super crazy version of Illustrator kind of I don't know it's crazy <laughs> I don't know, I'm not that good, you know, like I, I, I wish I was and, but like some of the people you meet in the type program are like insane, it's, it's very inspiring to be around those people, but they could tell you, have you, have you seen that documentary Psalm about like the wine connoisseurs? <laughs> Maybe. No, uh, it's on Netflix, you guys should check it out, but <laughs> it's like they could tell what like region, what year, what location, how old the wine is and stuff like that. And just by like looking in and tasting it, I feel like that's the same thing for these dudes in like the type program where they'll tell you like 
who taught what, like their influences, what country, like why they do it a certain way, and then obviously the name of the typeface, the foundry, the year it was released, and shit like that. It's just like, like unbelievable, like the knowledge base that they have in their mind. I totally forgot the question, but <laughs> but yeah, cool. <laughs> What was the question? I don't even remember. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so um, yeah, as I was saying, the people who become typeface designers are kind of like that's their thing, you know. Um, I kind of liken it to being like an animator or like a like a three D modeler or something like that. That's like, I mean, obviously, I'm not trying to generalize everyone, but I feel like those kind of people that go into like very specific fields, that's kind of their thing, right? You know, they have. You have to master it. You can't like really be a hobby animator, I think. Yeah, maybe you can, but I mean it's a very time-consuming, intensive process, and that's the same for like typography. And I like to do too many things to just say like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. You know, like this is gonna be my thing. But I mean that's why I like lettering. It's kind of like this combination of drawing but also typography. So that's what works for me, I guess. I mean I don't really do that stuff too much right now I'm like thinking about it but I kind of started this like t-shirt hustle in high school and I was um, I don't know I, I was like one of those like oh I'm so into street art and whatever <laughs> and like that's uh, I was trying to do that and I thought like the best way to get my stuff out there was to like put them on t-shirts and it was actually like really fucking corny I would like sell it to like all my high school friends and I remember like I would get like misprints but I would still sell them because like I didn't have any money <laughs> It's pretty, pretty garbage, but then um, when I got into college, I tried to do it more seriously, and it was still really bad. It, was, it wasn't good at all, but I was kind of like jocking like the whole kid robot style of like designer toys and like that kind of aesthetic, I guess, and I don't know, it got like somewhat popular, I guess, but I wasn't really feeling that that much either, because it started as one thing, and then like as I went through school, it kept on evolving into another thing. And then my senior year, I was trying to work on it for my thesis. And that was the, kind of the time when I was like, I don't know, trying to be a serious artist or something like that. And it really changed the direction of the brand. And to be honest, I don't really like that stuff that much either. And right now, I haven't really told anyone, but like I'm, I'm thinking about just like scrapping it and starting like fresh with something else. And, because a lot of the stuff I do now is more about like, I guess like, like my sense of humor. It's not really about like characters and stuff like that. So I'm leaning towards more of like a lifestyle thing where I just make random shit that I think is funny, <laughs> you know? And like I had one idea for like, you know those felt pennants, like those, like go school or whatever, you know? Right, right. I want to have one that says like last place on it. <laughs> Cause then like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I find a lot of humor in like mundane shit where, I don't know, people are, cause like, I, I think it's funny when things that are normal are celebrated as opposed to like being really good at something. Cause it's like obvious, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> cool. So that's kind of what I'm trying to work on now. It's weird, I, I think I, it's almost cyclical where I started off doing like these kind of like random drawings that just like made me happy and I don't know, they were very, it was like really corny stuff where you know when like you're into street art in high school and you would draw like a bunch of spray cans and stuff. <laughs> and like, I didn't even like vandalize anything, I just I was like oh man this is so cool, you know like, like let me draw spray cans but um, and like dripping stuff, <laughs> you know like. I mean, I don't think that's like as popular now, but back in high school, if you had like paint drips, your shit was dope, you know. <laughs> but I would do that, and then um, then I got really into like the toy culture and stuff like that, and that that was cool too. It was very vectory, sharp, crisp lines. And then towards the end of school, I got into very like rendered drawings, and I think I was self-conscious because I thought that if I didn't draw um, maybe realistically or figuratively or very like represent representational art that people weren't going to take me seriously or something. I guess like, I mean you guys are still young but when you go through your thesis they're kind of like, hey you should sort of know what you're doing by now. But in, in truth no one knows what they're doing. Like I don't know what I'm doing now but 
I think they kind of like forced this on you a little, well not forced, but your thesis is supposed to be like this culmination of all your studying, you know, and it scares you into being like, oh man, I have to be serious now, but then, like after I graduated, I started doing really loose stuff, and I realized that that's what fits me the most, and I don't know, like, because you're not so, your art isn't basically supposed to be impressing anyone, I mean, maybe some people do, but I realized that that was a constraint on me where I was like trying to be cool or trying to be popular or something like that. And like, the funny thing is, the more like loose my stuff is now, the more people respond to it. So, I don't know. I, I guess that's kind of the evolution of my artwork. I don't know. I was very naive when I first started, and I don't think I could have done it without the internet, but at the same time, I did some very like bullshit amateur things because I felt empowered to do so, you know what I mean? Like, I think back in the day, if you're trying to start t-shirts, like you would have to like sell them out of your trunk and like really get in front of people and like approach stores and stuff like that. But when you have like a website or an online presence, you don't have to go through like the tough stuff, you know? So. I don't know, I, I think I, I was very arrogant starting off because I was like, oh, I'm going to make like a cool ass brand, but it wasn't cool at all, you know, like I didn't, because I didn't have to go through any of that, I, I was just like faking it, and I think that was like a big thing for me, like the whole like fake it till you make it kind of thing, but looking back on it now, um, I don't know, I, it's, obviously there's resources that really help you push these things, like Twitter, Facebook, whatever, Instagram, but at the same time, I don't know, I, I, now I'm trying to focus more on just like building an organic audience as opposed to like being a whore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, before I would work with printers and um, I've had some like horrible experiences because I I think like the big thing was I, I wanted to look like I was legit, you know, even if I wasn't. And I would like want to do like cut and sew and I would want to make like custom fabric hats and stuff like that. And it would put push me into a territory that I wasn't comfortable with and I probably wasn't ready to be doing. And I don't know, I got screwed over like a lot of times, you know. and. Now I'm trying to focus on, like like you said, like very limited goods that I have very strong control over and I can really see the whole process. And, and luckily I have some friends too who are like in the fashion industry and um, I don't know, I have, I have way more resources now to, to do things the way I want them instead of trying to just like fake it, you know? I mean, in terms of freelance, I always wanted like new cool clients, you know. I do have a lot of personal projects just because I love like making stuff. <laughs> but in terms of dream clients, I really want to do a hot sauce bottle. I like reached out to this dude. I'm like a hot sauce nerd. Like, <laughs> I really, really love hot sauce. I can like show you my refrigerator. I have like 12 bottles, and I like I, I go through them because I. It's hard to find the right one, you know. I, I found a really good one. Um, it's called the Dorado Diablo hot sauce in, in, from this like taco place, and you have to buy it in the taco place. Um, well, I totally digressed, but <laughs> but yeah, like I, I want to do a hot sauce just because I really love hot sauce. Um, Doom, like he's my favorite rapper of all time, pretty much, and I think he has wonderful um, art direction too because he was like a graffiti writer, and he works with um, fuck, what's his name? Shit, I forgot his name, but um, the, the artist who does a lot of his work is like one of my favorite illustrators. Oh yeah, I have it right here. I forgot what this dude's name is, but he does like the coolest fucking artwork. Um, what's his name? But anyway, I really love this illustrator and I always wanted to, and he also works with Espo. Do you know Espo? He's like, um, he's also a sign writer, but um, way more like traditional center um i always wanted to like be in that mix <laughs> you know because i don't know he's yeah i think he's probably one of like my biggest inspirations like aesthetically um 
spiritually, <laughs> you know, just that whole atmosphere of them. So, yeah, those would be my dream clients. I mean, probably Lou Ballin, because, I don't know, he's just like the god. <laughs> Same thing with, uh, what's his name, uh, Doyle Young, um, just like old school, like traditional letters. Yeah, because like for a while I was really into like the trendy letters and stuff like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that, like I'm trying to be one, <laughs> you know, but at the same time if you look you know when you look at like the inspiration of the people you're inspired by, that's when you get like the source of what's good, you know? Like I fucking hate when like you look at Pinterest or whatever and people aren't lettering because they understand what they're doing. They're just copying the people that are lettering. And I think that's bullshit. Like that's like I was gonna make an analogy, but I can't think of one. But it's, it's like it's like trying to fly a plane because you like planes. You know, it's like it's like you're you're skipping a bunch of steps. And I don't know. I, I always like I when I whenever I try to do something, I at least try to learn everything there is about about it, or at least the history behind something. You know, even though like my. Maybe not everything that I do is historically accurate, but I try to like be as inspired as possible by like the root, you know. And when you look at like, I guess modern lettering, I think you see the Doyle Young, um, Tom Carnes, Lou Ballin, Louis Philly, you know, like all those people. And I think it's really important to look at those people. I th I, th I think one. Artist that I was really blown away by, and I think during college I was especially influenced. But um, you know, Faust, he does a lot of very calligraphic things, and he's like one of those dudes that you can tell has some sort of formal training. And I know, like, even with his tag, he doesn't he doesn't do like a super quick one. He actually like sort of takes his time. And I mean, I don't really write or anything, but. I always figured if I were to, I'd, I would try to be like him and like really do some like nice shit, you know. My buddy John Garcia is like one of the sickest painters I know. Like he sh he should be famous, but he's kind of like playing like the long game where he's gonna be like famous as shit in like the future, like 40 years down the line, and I'm gonna like own his pieces and stuff like that. So that's all good. Um, I think two contemporary illustrators that um, I'm like good friends with. They're like really blowing up now, but um, uh, they all have like a little studio together. Mon Ramos, she's like, she's like illustration superstar now. It's crazy. Like I feel like I was like watching her do it, you know. And then uh, Rachel Levitt's also extremely talented. She's probably like the coolest person I know. Um, Leah Gorin is also part of that studio, and she does like amazing like textile work. I don't know, I'm really bad at that stuff. I don't, I don't really do it. I wish I had like an inter intern to do it or something. <laughs> um, I don't know, I've, had, I've actually had this conversation with Monica before, but I don't like that I care about what people think, you know? And, and I can't help it too, when you get a heart or a like or whatever, it's like crack, you know? You're like, oh man, I just want some more, you know? <laughs> you know it's, and I, I don't know, like, I don't want to care, but at the same time, sometimes I'm like really psyched about something I did and I'll post it on Instagram and no one likes it. I'm like, what the fuck? This is like the nicest thing I've done. <laughs> you know, like, give me a break. But, um, yeah, besides, yeah, that's like the one thing I really don't like about it is that I feel like sometimes I want to cater my work to be popular. But then, like, going back to what I was saying before, the more I don't care about it, the, the better work I do, you know? So, Tumblr I don't really use. I, I just like started a tumble, Tumblr recently and I just like post my doodles up there and stuff, but I don't really care. I use Instagram pretty frequently. Like I, I always don't check it at night so that like when I take a shit in the morning, I can like go through and like have my time, you know? Same thing with Twitter. I love Twitter. Twitter's probably my favorite because it's kind of like a, it's all up to you, you know, it's like you, you follow who you want to follow, so you can't complain about Twitter, because Twitter is just a platform when, when people are like, oh, well, like, why do I care about someone's breakfast? It's like, you're following the wrong people then, you know, like, I care 
about the people I follow and they, they provide very interesting material to me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I have this one project that I've been working on for a while now, especially because I'm in the Cooper program and like last summer, I think it was last summer, um, was it, yeah, maybe some summer, fall, I guess, I was teaching this girl calligraphy, well, sort of, I was like just trying to help her like one-on-one -on -one, and um, I was like, oh man, like it would be really helpful if there was a notebook that had like a grid system for learning like script and lettering and stuff like that and don't steal this idea this is mine but anyway I'm, I've been working on it for a while now where I actually have like a prototype of a notebook with kind of like a niche grid system that I can use to either teach learn or like just like doodle letters and stuff like that and I don't know, I think it's a, it's a cool project that I've been wanting to work on and I haven't really had the time for it but the cool thing is that, um, I don't know, sometimes I get lucky with like the people I work with and I'm working on this rebrand and website for this dude named Todd from Canvas Society and he's like this amazing businessman and he um, runs like the stationary thing and I was like, oh man, there's like the perfect connection and I'm like kind of hooking him up with the website and branding and he's gonna help me with my notebook stuff so and he's gonna make it like beautiful so I'm really excited about that that's kind of one thing I'm working on yeah <laughs>